Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight we're going to be heading into the depths of the basement for a collection of scary stories. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like and bell before the video begins to be notified every time I post. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I used to work in a hotel as a security guard. For context, the building was built in the year 1922, and it had a basement. Well, one night, the front desk clerk, myself and the valet, are all hanging out in the lobby just chatting, when suddenly a phone rings. The strange thing was that the phone call was coming from the basement where the offices are. At the time, there was supposed to be no one in the basement. I had already locked the doors and made sure no one was in there. So the front desk clerk picks up the phone, and we heard a strange noise, and then the call was disconnected. It gives me chills to the bone. So the valet guy and I go down to make sure no one's trespassing, but the doors are still locked, and we didn't see anyone come out, so we went inside the office. The only thing we found is the phone blinking. It looked like someone had picked it up, then suddenly dropped it. The valet and I looked at each other, and then saw the cold sweat on our faces. That's one of the creepiest things that happened to me while working as a graveyard security officer. My daughter wanted to have a sleepover for her 10th birthday party. They set up downstairs and towards the end of the night, they were watching a movie. Well, around midnight, I was starting to get tired. So I got up and checked on them, and they were all asleep. I decided at this point it would be prudent to go upstairs to my room, where my wife was already sleeping. My door was open to the hallway. I started to get undressed, when I was very surprised to see a girl with long dark hair walk from my daughter's room down the hall right past my door. I was a little shocked, considering I had just seen them sleeping moments before. I stepped into the hallway to check, but no one was there. I checked the bathroom, no one was there, and I continued through the house, finding absolutely no one upstairs. I thought I saw someone by the stairs, so I asked, Do you need something? But there was no response. I walked down the stairs to see that all the kids were still asleep. I was dumbfounded. I got a very strange feeling, not scared, but disbelief that this had even happened. Did I just follow a ghost into my basement? I never saw anything else in the house, but I started to look for a new house regardless. I'm an electrician and worked in many old buildings across Texas and New Mexico. One in particular has generated many encounters with the paranormal. It was in 2019 when I first went to work on this building, and the first incident my co-worker had told me they had experienced was how they had been working in the basement and hanging some metal, electric metallic tubing for running wire through, and they had several bundles on the floor. They were both on ladders, helping each other while working over a piece of gear. While they are doing all this, they hear a bundle of pipe get kicked. So they look at each other, and both said, Did you hear that? There was probably no one else in the building at the time, and they were absolutely sure because the doors to the basement are heavy and loud to open, and close, so they would have heard someone come in or out. I, at the time, was skeptical of the whole thing until one night we had a shutdown. We have to disconnect the main power to a building to install equipment that changes from commercial service, which is provided by the city, to temporary power from a generator. We had just finished at around 2.30 a.m., and I was double-checking on tools and turning off all the lights so that we could sign out and leave. While on my way up the stairs from the basement to the door that had once been a blast door, I'm on the landing of a set of stairs heading up, and I hear the word, Hey, whispered right behind my right ear. Not only did I hear it, I felt the wind of the word on the back of my head. 
I noped out of there so fast I looked like a crazy person, with my six foot two, three hundred pound frame bursting through the door, just saying, Ah, oh, hell no, nah, just whispered in my ear, while two of my journeymen are looking at me like, What got to you? Later on in that same week, we had to stick around the building for a few more hours because we had to move an old breaker and had to make sure it was going to hold. Well, me and the journeyman at the time decided we should just chill in the building on the first floor and went to wait it out. We found a comfortable spot, me next to some equipment and my journeyman across the very large room at the desk. The equipment I'm next to has to have constant AC blowing into it because it can overheat very quickly. It also happens to be over 100 degrees outside at the time, and I'm just enjoying the breeze and kind of drifting off in my thoughts when I hear something drop near my head. I get up to look and find a pen on the floor next to me. I look up to see where it had come from and found the dust ring in the perfect shape of the pen I had found a few feet away. I almost lost my mind. I yelled to my journeyman that I was not staying here anymore and we promptly went to the truck and sat there occasionally, going in to check if everything was still working. Later, my journeyman tried to tell me that maybe it just vibrated off the equipment and fell, but if that were the case, it wouldn't have a dust ring from sitting in the same place for so long now, would it? And how did it almost hit me several feet away when it was only three feet off the ground? I've also heard footsteps and doors opening and closing on the first floor while in the basement. Multiple times I would close the doors that led upstairs and would run up to see who was there. I could get up those stairs pretty quickly and would look outside to see if there was another vehicle and there never was. And as soon as I got back down the stairs, the footsteps and doors would start back up again. I found out later that the story of the building was long and had multiple layers. It started when the building was a Cold War bomb shelter. When it had been completed, there were three people staying in it to test the on-site workings, etc., like water, electricity and air. The test had to be held over a period of time relative to if there had been a real nuclear disaster. And one of the participants died during the test and they were not able to open the doors until the test was complete. He had to be buried where they had placed dirt, peat moss and grow lights for growing food. I wonder if his ghost is still around. My friend wanted to renovate their basement, and the first step was replacing their bulkhead stairs. His daughter was probably three or four years old at the time, and to keep an eye on her, we set her up with some toys in the basement where we were working. As we were cutting the stair treads to size, we heard his daughter laughing and talking outside and assumed she was just playing with dolls. Around lunchtime, we took a break and went into the basement and asked my friend's daughter what game she was playing. She mentioned that Nana came to visit and she was showing her her dolls. I should mention that my friend's grandmother who owned the house, passed away a few years before his daughter was born and had never met her. There were still a few boxes of her possessions in the basement that the family had decided to not get rid of. Was it a ghost or a child's imagination? You decide. When I was 10 or so, my parents bought a house a few states away from where we used to live to be closer to my aging grandparents. The house was fairly big, but one thing that I remember mostly that I loved to do was go down to the finished basement to play. It was a massive area where I had all my toys spread out and can play to my heart's content without anyone bothering me. My mother would usually scream for me to come upstairs and get food and stuff like that. But for most of the day, my parents knew I would be downstairs playing in the basement, and for a while things were fine. One thing that the basement had was a small room at the very end, where my dad kept all his junk, like his man cave, and my mom a few of her craft things. I never went into that room, I never needed to, and one day as I was playing, the light switch turns on by itself in the room. I look up 
and see the light coming out from underneath the door. That's strange, I thought. I make my way and open the door and the light is on. I switch it off, close the door and resume playing. About 20 minutes later, it comes on again by itself. This time, when I look up, I'm relatively certain that I could see something moving underneath. The shadow under the door was strange. It was almost like two pair of feet. So I slowly put my eye to the floor and look. That's when I see what appears to be two big boots standing there. The door was entirely made of wood, no little convenient window pane to look in, and I am just about crapping myself. How did someone get in without me seeing, and why are they standing there ominously behind the door? I wait. I wasn't sure if I should scream for my mother, and part of me was afraid that I would get into trouble. Don't ask me why, I can still not figure that one out. And after what feels like an eternity, I just shout, Mom! My mum comes down the stairs asking what's wrong, and when I turn to look at the door, the boots are gone and the light is off. In that moment I wasn't really sure if I should tell her, but something inside me was so afraid that I just started crying and said everything. She patted me on the shoulder and told me it was fine and not to worry, and to let her know if I see anything again. It was quite comforting to be believed, and I left it at that. It happened a few times, and every time I saw the light turn on, I instantly called out for my mother. And whatever it was, always seemed to be gone by the time she came down. Well, one day she was out running errands, and had left me home alone for a little while. I was told to stay downstairs even if someone knocked at the door and not come up until I heard her return. A little while after she'd left, I see the light come on behind the door. I'd gotten so used to it I wasn't that afraid anymore, and I saw the boots. But what then terrified me was the sound that preceded this, which was the sound of the door handle being pushed down and the door slowly being opened. I heard the creak of the hinges as the door started to push open and more open. My eyes fixated on the perverse horror that was about to ensue. As the door opens fully, I see that the boots are connected to a whole body of a man. He stands there in the doorway. He looks a bit like a fisherman with a long, dark coat and a big hat. He stares at me. He doesn't make a sound and he doesn't move. I just look up for what feels like an eternity. And then a moment later, he's gone, like he was never there. I scream, run up the stairs, and sit by the front door crying in a ball. When my mum returns, I tell her what I saw, and she says that she's going to get the house blessed. After that, I never saw the apparition again, but it was already too late. The basement was tainted for me, and I refused to play there anymore. Years later, when we were trying to sell the house and speaking with a neighbour, I don't know how the topic of conversation came up, but they mentioned something about the previous owner. My mum asked who they were and what they were like. They said they were fairly decent people, but they had a pretty sad life. The man had apparently worked as a fisher and left his wife here alone too often, and she ended up going off with some other guy. In his depressed state, he took his own life right there in the basement. I lived alone at my dad's place for a few years, between 2008 and 2014, when he moved in for a while with his then-girlfriend. One day I went back home earlier than usual around 2pm. I was all alone and even confirmed it by reflex to check the parking lot to see no one was there as my dad or his girlfriend would sometimes pass unannounced to get their mail or do laundry. So I get inside, sit at my computer that's on the first floor, 
and can hear all of a sudden the clear noise of someone doing the laundry downstairs with the recognisable sound of the washing machine door being open, the wet clothes being thrown in the dryer and the clicking noise of the selection knob, the whole thing. I was already pretty scared, but I remember my dad and his girlfriend sharing a car, so maybe he had just dropped her off to do some laundry and went running to do some errands. So I leave it at that and hear all the usual noises of someone finishing folding and then drying up clothes, pulling off the clean laundry basket and then walking to the stairs of the basement. I remember removing my headphones, stretching my neck sideways to greet my dad's girlfriend as I could hear someone climbing the stairs. Then I see no one. I thought she was messing with me or something and I walked to the staircase and it's empty. I went downstairs, walked to the dryer and it was unused and cold. Absolutely nothing was there or had been moved in a few weeks. I remember clearly and vividly having acknowledged that someone else was there. That's how clear and evident all of the noise was. I immediately called my dad to verify what the hell was going on and if he'd recently come over. Turns out they were on vacation four hours away for about a week and I slept upstairs until we sold it a few years later. It is a well-known and often undisputed fact that buildings make noise, whether it be from heat exchange, cooling, and the like, maybe even the wind. Buildings make noise. At least, that's what I told myself. I was a priest many, many years ago, and I worked in a small church in a very remote town in England, but I don't want to mention where. You see, one thing that I had not expected when entering the priesthood was the events that happened to me at the parish. I'll give you the lowdown. I worked in a fairly old church. It was one of those churches that was made of stone and had probably been standing there for hundreds upon hundreds of years. It had a basement, where oftentimes things were kept, but one noticeable feature was that at some point in the past, a few people had elected to be buried on consecrated ground, and that meant in the church, and that also meant in the basement. Well, fair enough, that's fine. It never really bothered me. It never even crossed my mind. The graves and the tombs underneath the church were just part of the church. It never bothered me. It was just there. Anyway, to get to the meat and potatoes of the story. This happened sometime in the mid 80s. Before cell phones were really a thing, and the world was a much simpler place. I was listening to the radio, tidying up some paperwork that I had been finishing in my office, which was also in a part of the basement. Now, right as I was finishing up, it must have been around nine o'clock. It was winter, it was dark, and if you've ever been in a church, or at least an old church, in the dark at night, it's very quiet, especially in the basement. There were very little animal noises because in England in the winter, there hardly ever is. It was just darkness with a few solitary street lights outside casting a yellowish orange haze upon the outside of the church. I had lights on inside to keep me illuminated at plenty and there I was just tidying up, finishing my work, getting ready to come back tomorrow. For context, I actually lived in the cottage next door, so it wasn't exactly far to walk, but something happened that really made it seem like a distance. Right as I was finishing up, I heard a tap. A tap on stone. Now our door is made of wood, so my first thought was, what was that? And it wasn't a long, drawn-out tap. It was just two quick taps in succession. Like someone was trying to get my attention. 
The kind of tap that you would give a teacher that you wanted to just politely ask something while they were talking to another teacher, that kind of tap. I listened. Had someone made their way in and was tapping on the floor? Did they want to talk to me? It was very unheard of. Most people wouldn't come into the church at night, less alone to speak to me. So there I was, listening. And I heard nothing. Weird. I tried to brush it off. Like I said, old buildings make noise. Must have been the heat, right? So I made my way to my little cottage and thought nothing more of it. But a few weeks later, I was in a very similar situation, working late at night. And that's when I hear a tap-tap again. It sounded exactly the same as last time. It really took me by surprise. I was really engrossed in something, and when I look around and turn my head this way and that, I am met with nothing. At that point, the church stopped feeling like my office and started feeling like a deep, creepy vault, being underground, amongst the dead. It started to really play on my mind. I decided that was enough work for today. Maybe my mind was just playing tricks on me. So I left and went to my cottage. Here's where the real fun begins. A few weeks later, we had put a lot of work into organising the primary school Christmas play. It was affiliated with the church, the school, and we decided to host it in the church. We'd made a small stage at the back, and the kids were having a great time, and lots of parents were here to watch the play. The kids had to get changed because of the layout in the church with the teachers in the basement. I was at the very top, just being a spectator. While everything finished and everyone was packing up and leaving, one of the small children come up to me and asked me a question. Who's Harry? I gave the child a puzzled look, but said I didn't know who Harry was and asked if they meant one of the parents who I did know was called Harry. But they said no, that Harry was a small boy who lived under the church. This really took me by surprise, and I kind of just smiled and off the child went without an answer. That evening, as I was clearing my stuff away, I heard the knock again. I turned around, and there was no one there. At that point, I decided it had been a long day. The Christmas play was getting to my head, and it was time for me to leave. I grabbed my things, started to walk out the door, when I heard a pen fall to the floor. I turned back around to see the shadow of something small, like a child, run into the bathroom section of my office. Part of me wanted to just run the hell out of there, flee and never look back. But another part of me, the logical part, told me there's no way a child could still be in here, and if there was, it was my duty to make sure they made it home, or at least inform their parents or something. My rational side won after a few deep breaths, and I slowly, but unashamedly terrified, made my way over to the small bathroom. The door was ajar. I slowly pushed it open, staring into the absolute darkness. Just as I pushed the door open and flicked on the light switch to be met with absolutely nothing, did I hear right behind me a tap on the stone. I just about peed myself at that moment. I couldn't bear turn around, and after a few seconds did I quickly do a switch and look behind me. There was no one there. I just about gave up and ran out of there leaving all the lights on and didn't come back for two days and decided any necessary work would have to wait. After a few days, when I finally plucked up the courage to return, I had a look around to see if there was anything strange in the basement. That's when I noticed something. My desk was just placed in a corner of the basement on this thick white stone. But what I'd never really noticed before, or the person who put the desk in before me as it was here long before I arrived, I assume, was that 
we had actually placed the desk on top of someone's headstone, the headstone being flat in this case. And as I pulled away the desk to reveal the faint writing at the bottom, I could just make out the words Charles and a date sometime like 1890. The kid had definitely died young, couldn't have been older than eight or nine. And it just made me wonder if perhaps he didn't like my desk being on top of his memory and was asking me to move it. Now the thing is there were an awful lot of these graves or headstones on the floor so finding a place where I could comfortably sit without there being one occupied was a little bit challenging. It was the only real space that we had for someone to possibly work in. So, after much deliberation, I decided to try and get the desk up the stairs and just have it near the organ, which is what I did. I went down often to use the bathroom, but never heard any more tapping or anything strange or had anyone say anything for the two years that I was there after that. Maybe he was at peace when I finally moved my desk. I guess I'll never know. Charlie, I hope you're resting in peace. This happened a few months ago when I lived with my now ex-boyfriend and had fallen asleep on the couch in the basement. It's undeveloped, but we had different areas for a movie room, laundry room, and playroom for his young daughter. I had never fallen asleep down there before, but I was exhausted and it was 3 a.m. So I decided to just sleep instead of go up the two flights of stairs to bed. I was more restless than usual and kept waking up for no apparent reason every few minutes, every half an hour or so. I was able to tell roughly how long the sleeps were because I'd left the TV on without sound and would fall asleep watching one show and wake up watching another. I was confused as to why I kept waking up, but was too exhausted to really care, so I kept falling back asleep. Then one time, I woke up to the sound of a semi-loud bang that had clearly come from somewhere in the basement. I sat up, looked around, and didn't see anything. I thought my boyfriend maybe came downstairs, but it was still and silent. I go back to sleep, and ten minutes later, I heard it again and I hear his daughter's rocking Elmo toy start talking. I don't remember what it said because I was too freaked out and too busy trying to figure out what the hell was going on. But it was about 15 seconds of this toy freaking randomly making noise. I get up, turn the light on and walk over to it. It's just sitting there randomly, sitting with its permanently wide-eyed expression staring off. I immediately head to bed and cuddle up with my sleep boyfriend. The next morning I asked him if he was playing a trick on me or something and he was like, hell no, I was dead asleep all night, which I believed because he was fighting off a cold and he had worked late that day. I told him about the Elmo toy and he said that it would only make noise when you are on it and rocking it back and forth. He insisted I was on crack, so we went downstairs and tried to make it make the same noise and it didn't work. We lived alone except for when his daughter was there on weekends and this was no weekend, and it was so freaky that I never went down there unless all of the lights were on and it was the day. He told some of his buddies, and they made fun of me non-stop for weeks. Oh God, the Elmo voice jokes were hilarity at its finest to them, but horrifying for me. I'm the youngest in my family, and my siblings always teased me or made fun of me or bugged me so I wouldn't want to be around them to play. My brother, for instance, always used to dress up as Scream every year for Halloween. It was his favorite. He's nine years older than me, and he used to wear it around the house to scare me sometimes because that's just what big brothers do to their five-year-old siblings, I suppose. Well, one day, my siblings were out with their friends and my dad was working and it was just me and my mum at home. I was helping her with cleaning and chores and she asked me to put my brother's folded laundry on his bed. As she was starting to do the dishes, and his room was in the basement, I did so, even though I didn't like the basement. It gave me the heebie-jeebies, and not in a good way. 
I was always petrified to be down there by myself, and I expressed to my mum that I didn't want to and that I was scared. She pulled the classic mum trick, saying, I'll time you and see how fast you can do it. I loved a good challenge, so I accepted. I ran down two flights of stairs, opened the door to the basement, ran to my brother's room, threw his laundry on his bed as I had such an uneasy feeling and slammed the door and was running back up the stairs. As I was going to shut the basement door, a scream was standing there. I let out a blood-curdling scream that was so loud it scared my mum and she actually dropped the dish she was holding and came running. I was running up the stairs crying hysterically and told my mum what happened. She yelled out to my brother to stop playing games with me. I knew he wasn't home, but my mum really tried her best to comfort me. We smudged the house after that, and my mum told the spirit that it had to leave. But there was only really enough room in the house for our family, and it had to go. Nothing really happened after that, but we did end up moving a year or two later to the mountains for dad's work. Whenever I talk about it, I still get shivers down my spine and goosebumps from head to toe. And that was 23 years ago. My stepdad had bought a house that was utterly destroyed on the inside. There was so much garbage you could hardly walk around. Cabinets, bathrooms, etc. were destroyed to the point where they weren't usable. He was able to get a really good deal from the bank and wanted to make this his new project. Fast forward a few months later... After the renovations had been done and we start moving in, one of the neighbours stopped to chat and would always ask what we were planning to do to the place. He finally gets the hint that we're staying and starts asking my cousin if we were cool. I was in my teens, but my cousin was in his 20s. It was just a weird thing to watch almost every day. This guy would come over and try to make small talk and end with, so you guys are cool, right? Jump fast forward another two months or so, and he comes over and asks my cousin for a favour. He says he used to hang out with the people that used to live there, and he's pretty sure something was left behind. My cousin tells him the house was gutted completely, so if anything was left, it's gone. The guy was persistent though, and eventually my cousin says he can come in to see nothing is there, and then he needs to go. Admittedly, I'm thinking we're about to get robbed, but follow them downstairs to the half-basement. The guy opens up the furnace room and glances around and then starts in again with, You guys are cool, right? Uh, yeah, why do you keep asking that? So he squeezes around the furnace a bit to the back wall. It looks like a normal concrete wall, but he starts sliding part of it open to reveal a little hidden area. My cousin and I look at each other like, What the hell is this? Sitting in the room were bags of cocaine, marijuana, and some other smaller items I couldn't quite make out. When the guy saw that they were still in there, you could tell he was scared we'd say or do something. He ended up giving my cousin some money to not say anything and ended up taking it all. We never said anything about it, but it was cool to know that we had a small hidden area in our house. When I was 17, a group of my friends and I decided to investigate an abandoned warehouse. While we were exploring, we discovered what appeared to be a basement. I looked at my watch and saw that it was nearing 3 a.m. While we were approaching down, I saw something that horrified me. There appeared to be what resembled a demon in a top hat with stringy long hair and pointed teeth that was staring at me directly in the face, a foot away from me. We took a few pictures and actually managed to capture the apparition, but upon trying to transfer them to my laptop, they always appeared to delete themselves or corrupt in some way. It's also said that the building nearly burnt down, it said that a bunch of people got stuck in the basement when the building caught fire in the early 1900s and they all died before they could put the fire out. I don't know the details per se. All that I know is what I saw with my own eyes. And the face is permanently burnt into my brain. I'm not religious, but I think I legit stared down a demon that day. Back in my younger life when I was 20, 
I worked for an office removal company called Premier Moves, which was based in Enfield, England, the town famous for the Enfield haunting. We visited many well-known companies all around the country and saw places in London that I never knew existed. This place was one of them. I started work when all of the office staff had left for home around 7 p.m. Our job was to move the department up to the next floor and the vacant floor was for the new people that we were moving in at a later date. So I had to suffer this place for four nights. The building was nothing to look at, just your average run-of-the-mill office block. Nearby was the fabled gherkin. As he walked onto the floor, walls and even ceiling were covered in glazed tiles, exactly the same ones that are used in London Underground's Bakerloo line, dark reds and dark greens. They were really beautiful to look at and had the wow effect still. We had to put plyboard on the floors to protect the floor tiles from our equipment. While we were working, a number of staff were still working overtime, and me being a history geek, struck up a conversation with a young office woman. I asked about the strange but beautiful deco, and was informed that it was once a part of the original London hospital. But due to being a grade 2 listed building, the exterior was built around the original structure to protect it, and the only interior modifications were the carpet in the offices to protect them from high heels and slipping and plasterboard on walls to stop damages to the tiles. I was even informed that in the basement was still the original morgue table that was a listed structure too. Bizarre, I thought. My duty was to operate the service lift, bring the equipment up and down, furniture, PCs, etc. Being the skinniest at the time, I was perfect for the role. The lift, or elevator, was small and ran in a shaft that was similar to the old-fashioned open shaft types with running stairs around it. Very clunky, very slow, and very annoying. So the night started like any other. I was then handed the lift key, which basically meant I had full control of the elevator, which meant no one could do anything to override my operations. I was effectively a lift boy. For the first four hours, everything was going fine without a hitch. From the level three we were working on, we stopped for a tea break for about an hour before the second stint of four hours. We started at 10 p.m., and this is when things began to get strange. Bear in mind I had the lift key, and the lift decided to go to the basement level despite me pushing G for ground level, and I wasn't paying attention and walked out the lift, realizing this wasn't the reception. When staring back at me were cream tiles, and a ceramic morgue table built to the floor, complete with drainage gullies for blood. What the hell, I thought? Getting back in the lift, I headed for the ground level, to which I got asked why I was in the basement. After letting know what happened to one of the porters, they said it may be a glitch, to which my supervisor said, Glitch or not, Dan has the override key, so Dan has full control and it shouldn't happen. So, this is my night for the next few shifts. I hit G and went to the basement, hit 2 and went to the basement, and guess what happened when I hit 1? You guessed it, basement. Each time I was greeted by the morgue table and perfect cream tiles. I have to admit I started getting used to it and it became the norm. I even started greeting it. Hey again, me there. During the final hours of the last day, I felt sad to leave as I had become used to Mr. Table and out of sympathy got sent to the basement by the lift as a farewell. It was a very peculiar experience working there. About 15 years ago, we had to redo the foundation of our house and there had always been a stone slab on the side of the building. When it was moved to get to the foundation, we discovered a staircase that led underneath the house. Our house was built in around 1898, so we found a few odd things over the years. Someone had mixed parts of insulation in the walls with thin obsidian rocks for some reason. The area under the house was fascinating for two specific reasons. One, there was a live wire just hanging in the middle of the room that looked like it held some sort of light fixture that had long since fallen off and just left this wire hanging. 
and the second was the more interesting thing. We found lots of supplies for making alcohol. Turns out the place had been used during Prohibition to make booze. There were glass bottles with weird paper-looking tops, tubing that looked like it had been used for a still, and various other sorts of booze-making and bottled things. It was a fun find for sure. Years later, the city tore up the street around us to install new water mains, and in front of our house, which at some point in the early 1900s was a small storefront, they found a buried fuel storage tank from an old gas station that apparently was there at some point. Sadly, no buried treasure or valuables, but you never know. When I was a kid, my room was in the basement. I was playing by myself when I got a weird feeling. I looked up and saw my bedroom door swaying open. It's an old basement, so I would have heard it open. My sister and I had a little decoration that was suction cupped to the glass in the door. When I looked up, it was hanging in midair. It then dropped to the floor. I flipped out and ran upstairs to tell my mum. I was freaking out and thinking something was chasing me. My mum was very understanding and went back with me to check. Growing up, I knew we were having weird occurrences in the home, particularly in the basement, but I didn't really know the extent of it. My mum confessed years later that she used to hear the basement doors open and close when she was the only one home. She eventually kicked whatever it was out. She never had any issues after that. Also, my dad watched the Tabasco bottle moving across the dining table years later. My mum was talking to him at the time. She said he got freaked out massively. My room is in the basement, and I have a fire escape window that leads outside. I had the windows open one night, because it was really hot, and it blew open the curtains for a brief second, and I swear to God that an old man was staring at me in the eyes while grinning. I opened the curtains immediately, and nothing was there. It was around 1am, so I totally could have imagined it. But after that, I just went and played Far Cry until morning. No way I was going to be able to sleep after witnessing that. Hey guys, it's Mort here. Thank you so very much for your patience and for listening. I really hope you did enjoy tonight's video. If of course you did, you can let me know in the usual way. It's always very much appreciated. Thank you guys. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to everyone for your patience, for waiting for me. I, um, I took a few days off after publishing my... 100 ghost stories for Halloween and then I published my video with Jane Atmos and then I got sick and then I published my other collaboration with Deadly Cure. So yeah, it's, um, it's not been the most productive November, sadly. But things should be up to speed now with the video today, video on Friday and a compilation on Sunday. So yeah, I'm hoping that we are back to the scheduled programming. I'm very excited. I have some really good videos this month, and although I've already skipped two, um, I'm really hoping to make up for it. So yeah. All right then, guys. Huge thanks as well to my members, patrons. You guys are amazing. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. Truly. But anyway, enough about me. If you want more content, it's on screen now. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.